I wanted to talk through a challenging and interesting topic today, and that is the topic of terminations and letting people go. Uh, if you're a vertically minded business owner and you're wanting to optimize your company for generosity and professional development and giving people chances and being known for being a place that people flourish and, and people experience your company and they and they write raving reviews on Glassdoor, which is always great and feels good. How do you reconcile terminations when that's your mindset? How do you feel good about letting people go and you not lose sleep at night and you feel guilty? guilty about, you know, cutting someone's employment off. Um, but there's absolutely a framework for that that can help you walk down the decision-making grid uh, so that if that time comes, if it has to come, um, then you can feel good about your decision. And in fact, you can feel confident that you've made the right decision for your company and you've optimized your company to have the very best people on the field. And so let's talk through that framework. Okay, first off, I can't start this segment without touching on something first. And that is, I feel a lot of um, small business owners um, that I have experienced or coached, they often don't hire well. Um, it's really, uh, it's a pattern that I've seen in small businesses where they typically don't have HR departments or HR directors to help you walk through the time consuming process of re, you know, looking at interviews and placing job ads and going through and filtering through all these people and giving some actual thought to it and negotiating people's OTE, their earnings um, and, and their salary and their benefits. It's, it's time consuming. And so the process gets quite often cheated. So you can save yourself a lot of uh, deliberation around, around terminations if you hire well. What does hiring well look like? Hiring well should look like at least a three series interview process. If you're just doing one interview and hiring someone, you're not getting their best. You're not getting a good read on them. People change as the interview process advances and, and you get to know them more and more. So a three interview process is critical. And so have a sophisticated or a little or a, a, an interview process that a hiring process that has some depth and you'll stay out of the weeds of the rest of this entire segment. Okay, when you think about optimizing your, your company, your culture, your team, Team, which is a huge part of building a successful company. And, and you have to approach terminations, you have to approach the, the, the weeding out of people who are not fit for your organization. We like to put people into two categories, and I think these are really helpful. The first category is the low performer currently who has heart and, and some of the attributes that you do like, they're just not doing their job well. The second category is the person with bad behavior, bad attitude. They seem to have personality traits that aren't fitting well inside your organization. Let's talk about this category, the low performer category first. It's a, it's a longer category. It's a little longer process in evaluating whether or not they can be in your organization. Organization. So when I look at low performers and we and we address uh, how to deal with them, the first thing you need to note is you need to document, document, document. Now you may not have an HR director, you may not have an HR department, but it is uber critical that you are documenting the journey and the lifespan of this person's uh, uh, time in your company. And, and documenting is a huge piece of knowing you're making the right decision, whether to keep them or not. Uh, if they're doing a poor job, you need to start that documentation process and start uh, truly um, compiling data on how things are going. Okay, so beyond documentation is the act of measuring. The act of measuring how employees are doing is critical, not just in evaluating terminations or, or, or holding on to people. It's obviously very important in, the, in a business to be measuring as much as you can to have a data-driven business. So measure everything you can possibly measure about an employee. Give them KPIs. Give them that measuring stick so they know where they're landing on the measuring stick. If, they, if they're supposed to hit 40 sales a month, then let them know they need to hit 40 sales a month. Have KPIs for the different areas of their performance. That's really going to help you feed the documentation, which was step one, is feeding your documentation through measuring your staff. So beyond measuring your staff, the next step is to really be communicative. You need to communicate a lot with, with low performers. They, they deserve every, they have every right to be communicated with. They deserve to know how they're doing. And so if they're underperforming, you should be communicating with them and talking to them about that. Is there's nothing worse than than a situation where someone just gets fired and they had no clue or didn't see it coming. As a vertically minded business owner, as someone who's who's uh, who's embodying kingdom values and wanting to be generous, that is not a good playbook. And so communicating with people regularly, documenting them, measuring them, and then telling them exactly how they're doing and communicating with them gives them a chance to up their game. They might not know they're focusing on the wrong things. They may not know they're not performing. And it may inspire them to work, to work at getting better at their job more quickly. So communicate, communicate, communicate with your staff 
especially those low performers. So beyond communicating, the next step in this process is to implement what's called a PIP. That's a performance improvement plan. A performance improvement plan is a document that is agreed upon by both parties, the employee and the employer, that these are the things you need to do to hold on to your job. These are the things you need to do to start performing in a way that will allow us to retain you as an employee and stay with our team. It, it could, it's definitely gonna have certain benchmarks around KPIs. It's gonna have, it's gonna have some goals in there that they need to hit. It, it could lay out coaching and mentoring. It might have a, some reading that they, that they need to do. It's a list of things that to help them improve their performance. And it's a signed document. And when you sign something, we all know that's an act of accountability. This is a great tool in optimizing your company and taking that next step in accountability uh, uh, in the journey of an employee who's underperforming. Okay, so the next step is step number five, and that is essentially we've reached a place now where we have given this employee a very fair chance. We've, we're in an effort to optimize uh, our, our company. We have we have put them through this process. We we're hoping for them. We're coaching them. We're hoping they'll improve, which would be a win. It means that they can stay with the company. But if not, we need to optimize our staff and we need to be as good as we can be. We've reached that place where this person we've determined is not going to make the cut. Now, the best outcome for this particular stage is to get the employee to understand and accept for themselves that this isn't working. So what this looks like is you know, meeting with them, talking through and getting them to a place by showing them documentation showing them data, showing them that you've coached them, showing them that they have not, uh, that they failed through the PIP and getting them to a place where they go, yeah, I, I can see this isn't working. That's a, that's a great place to be as a vertically minded business owner. If you do have to exit someone to get them to say, I get it, you will save yourself a lot of uh, potential legal fees and a lot of heartache if you can get people to that place um, mentally. So um, that's an effective way to, to go beyond the PIP, get them into a place where, where everybody knows knows it's time to find a new option. So when you've reached that place of finding a new option, it really is, uh, there's some real different ways of approaching this. As I mentioned, you can pink slip them on Sunday night, they find it on Monday morning, that's never really great. Um, or you can approach this with, uh, with generosity and, and in a way that could help them maybe springboard them into their next opportunity. That can look at several different ways. I don't necessarily always recommend this, but it is possible that you can give them a little bit of time, kind of like turning in your two weeks. It gives, gives them a little bit of time to try to get on their feet, find a new job, move on with their life in a way that is less shocking and, le and less abrupt. Now, you have to be very careful with that. This is a total judgment call because having anybody have access Access to you know client lists and and data and things that, that might have been under their responsibility while on their way out can be can be a sketchy move. So I don't I'm not advocating that necessarily all the time. You would have to know the person very very well, or it could be dictated by the type of job they have. But if you can give them a little time, that is that that's um, that is a, a kind and gracious thing to do. Secondly, you might consider severance. Um, in the right scenarios, a severance check is very very helpful to people um, to help them have a financial soft landing and helps them pay their bills for you know, a couple weeks or a month. You give them a paycheck or two. And uh, helping them in that way um, certainly is... Um Again, a gracious and generous way to help them leave the company. You're giving them a little help on the way out. And then lastly, um, at times we've tried to help people find a job. I mean, we've, I've had an HR director in a previous company who she was fantastic at this. I mean, on their way out, she would get people to acknowledge it's probably not working. And then we would work our network and try to find a placement for that person. And so um, helping them have a soft landing is a great way to exit people who it's not that they were toxic. It's not that they were bad people. It's just wasn't a fit for their skill set inside your company. So doing as much as you can for them will help you to sleep at night and reconcile that feeling of wanting to do right by people but wanting to optimize your company so that was the uh that was the on the decision making grid that was the low performer they had but they have heart and character and they're trying and, and, and um the other side of this decision making grid is or, or categorization of these people is the uh uh, the low character, uh, culture eroder, kind of toxic person who just isn't a fit um, from a behavior and personality perspective. This is a very, very different path. It's a, it frankly is a much quicker path and, and a path where um, this is where you can make a decision much more quickly. Why is that? Because here's the deal, folks. Generally speaking, you will not 
change people's core attributes. If people are lazy, um, they have a very apathetic, laissez-faire attitude towards customers, towards their job, you can spend a lot of time beating your head against the wall, trying to change them, trying to coach them, trying to get them to change those core personality traits, and 99% of the time it will not work. So I highly recommend not taking them on as like a personal project, trying to change them, but better yet, protecting your staff, protecting the culture you have, protecting even your customers, from them and getting them out of the organization quickly. So it isn't harsh. Don't think that you're mean. Don't lose sleep over it. In fact, be confident in that decision and, and, and be aware that you're being a protector of your company. You're protecting your existing staff. You're making a good conscious decision. You're, you make that decision in confidence. Um, and that's what biz, good business owners do. They don't, they don't dally around. They don't, they don't drag these kind of things out. They make a good decisive decision and hanging on to that type of individual, I will promise you 99% of the time will come back to bite you. One of the things I see business owners who, who are in this situation, who try to hang on to people too long is they fall into the trap of hanging on to what I call talented jerks. And that is that the, the, the person that you have hired and they're great at their job, but their personality is terrible. The temptation to hang on to talented jerks is high. You're, you're like, man, this guy's crushing it in sales. He's actually making me a lot of money, but don't fall into the trap of hanging on to something that will help you in the short term that will hurt you in the long term. You will erode your culture. One talented jerk can spread an incredible amount of drama throughout a, even a decent sized organization. So when optimizing your company through uh, the difficult choice of terminations and uh, and layoffs and firing, um, this is a grid work that you can use to feel confident about your decision. One of the most important things you can do is have a killer team. And you cannot have a killer team with bad apples uh, on board. So be confident, determine ahead of time how you're going to optimize your staff and your roster for the best possible outcome for your business and be confident about what you do, stick to your guns and move ahead. Hey everybody, if you like what you heard today, I uh, would sure appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Uh, if we're out on, we're on Apple, Google and X would appreciate it if you go find us there and give us a like. Thanks.